Welcome back to the Godot Rapport. As many of you know, Facebook is attempting to rebrand the entire company to Meta, and that includes their virtual and augmented reality division, which is now known as Meta Reality Labs. Anyway, the whole reason we're bringing this all up is because Meta Reality Labs has funded Godot with an undisclosed amount of money in the form of a grant. The purpose of this grant is to fund the Godot team's work on further developing Godot's XR capabilities, and this actually isn't the first time this has happened. In December of 2020, the Godot Engine project received a grant from Facebook Reality Labs for the same purpose. So what was the Godot team able to accomplish this past year with those funds? The previous grant allowed the team to hire Bastion to work on XR support in Godot. Work was done on the mobile version of Vulkan Renderer, adding stereoscopic rendering support through Multiview and a huge rewrite for the XR system in Godot 4. The old GD native system was completely rewritten to the new GD extension system. Additionally, OpenXR support was added to Godot 3. Godot 3 now works with the Quest 1 and 2 VR headsets, Meta Desktop XR including Link on Windows, and Steam VR on both Windows and Linux. Looking forward to 2022, the team has shared their plans on what they will use this new grant for. Half of the funds will be used to continue the work on XR support, including making Godot's OpenXR compatible with more devices and implement various new features announced in recent months. The other half of the funds will be used to make the Godot editor itself an extended reality experience. The thought process behind this decision is as follows. Working on XR games means constantly switching between desktop and wearing a headset and this will help alleviate part of that frustration. The improved spatial awareness that XR offers makes authoring scenes and levels inside of XR an appealing choice. The Godot team believes that even level designers who are working on non-XR 3D games may find this workflow productive. And as is tradition, Meta, <coughs> Facebook has built itself quite a negative reputation and the Godot community raised concerns over Godot's involvement with them. Surely Meta isn't funding Godot out of the kindness of their hearts. There has to be some sort of mutually beneficial reason for this grant. As many of you know, Meta has been pumping millions of dollars into developing the Oculus VR headsets. It is clear they believe in the future of VR and AR and are working to make that future a reality. And if Meta is in the business of selling VR headsets, they need developers to make games and other software for those headsets. Unity and Unreal already have robust solutions for VR, and since Meta is directly funding Godot's XR development, it must be because they believe Godot has a real shot in competing with the other game engines in the future. And to further put the community's mind at ease, Remy, Godot's project manager, reassured the community by explaining in depth how this all works. Godot is a non-profit project that is given for free to the community. However, the core team that works full-time and part-time to develop the Godot engine is paid through a combination of corporate sponsors and grants, as well as user donations via Godot's Patreon. In regards to grants, the Godot team themselves reaches out to these companies and asks for support. They write a work package that describes features they want to add to Godot, how they intend to get it done, and how much it will cost. If the company likes the plan and agrees with Godot's vision, they give the grant. The Godot team used this method to secure grants from Mozilla for the rendering, web, and networking functionality. They did this with Microsoft to give Godot C-sharp support. They did this with Epic for rendering and GDScript work. And of course they did this with Facebook slash Meta slash Oculus for Godot's XR support. The Godot team is always in the driver's seat. They only work on features and improvements that they want to work on. The companies do not dictate Godot's future. Remy reassured the community by saying that, you can't hire the Godot project to work for you. If a company were to approach them with a list of demands and a fat stack of cash, they would redirect them to existing consulting companies that can implement things for them at a market appropriate rate. And if a company did submit a contribution on GitHub, all contributions are reviewed to ensure quality, that they align with Godot's vision, and that they are not too vendor specific. Overall, I trust the current Godot dev team in leading the Godot project in the right direction. They wouldn't have been able to bring the engine where it is today without a high level of competency. With the current leadership team, I believe Godot will continue to grow and evolve into a tool that every game developer seriously considers for their projects. By the way, LearnGodot.com is offering a new course, Tactical 2D Top-Down Shooter in Godot Engine. In this course, you will learn how to implement a top-down character controller that uses the mouse position to rotate and aim. You will also learn how to build a state machine for the enemies so that they can dynamically react to the environment 
and switch between attack, walk, and idle states. Use coupon code KAIJU to receive 10% off your first order. The first wave of Steam Deck pre-orders are now expected to ship in February of 2022, instead of the original December timeline. Anyone who has ordered one will maintain their place in the queue, it's just that everyone's order will be pushed back. In a blog post, Valve said, We did our best to work around the global supply chain issues, but due to material shortages, components aren't reaching our manufacturing facilities in time for us to meet our initial launch dates. Valve also clarified on their fact page that the Steam Deck won't have any exclusive titles. Their vision for the Steam Deck is that it is a PC running SteamOS, which itself is built upon Linux, and therefore the Steam Deck should play games just like any other PC would. This means it is up to you to make games for the Steam Deck. Valve is pumping their resources into making as many games as possible compatible with Linux via Proton. They've made great strides in regards to single-player games. Over 80% of the 1,000 most popular single-player games on Steam are now fully playable on Linux. But many AAA multiplayer games that were not built with Linux support from the beginning may not ever be compatible unless the studio themselves implements the support, as usually the problem lies with the anti-cheat system also not supporting Linux. However, if the Steam Deck is successful enough and becomes a mainstay in the gaming hardware market, game companies and anti-cheat companies will be forced to make their products compatible with the Steam Deck and therefore compatible with Linux. I know many people would gladly switch to Linux if not for the game compatibility issue. But honestly, most people have maybe heard of Linux, but largely view the computer world as a Windows versus Mac thing. The success of the Steam Deck could quite possibly be the catalyst that pushes Linux into the mainstream. Introducing the first ever Godot add-on jam. This jam is focused on creating add-ons for the Godot engine. The official start date is January 20th. Link will be in the description. And now is the part of the show where we'll show off some cool projects made with the Godot engine. SG Physics 2D is a deterministic 2D physics engine for Godot based on fixed point math. What is a deterministic physics engine, you may ask? A physics engine is deterministic if it will play out exactly the same on two different computers, if both have the same exact starting state. Most physics engines aren't deterministic, including the built-in physics engine in Godot. And that's usually fine, because most games don't need deterministic physics. But for some games, especially online multiplayer games using certain network synchronization techniques like rollback and prediction, a deterministic physics engine is a requirement. ECSG is a collection of custom CSG compatible presets, generators, and utilities to speed up whiteboxing. Data log is a quick and easy way to manage game data for all kinds of items. Godot Trail System is an advanced trail slash ribbon plugin for the Godot engine similar to Unity 3D's system. The plugin offers full features in 3D and basic 2D functionality. GD Pick is a color picker tool built on the Godot engine which allows you to easily pick colors from your screen. Steam API is a plugin that allows you to implement Steam integration without rebuilding Godot. Advanced Character Creation System is still in development. The full system will feature complete clothing creation system with free placement of textures, full blend shape customization for body and face shape, hair modeler feature that allows the creation of any hairstyle, skin modifier for skin color and tone, and free placement of tattoos and piercings. Godot Stereo 3D adds stereoscopic 3D support to Godot Engine, in-game and in editor. It works as a screen space shader based on the depth buffer. The best 3D glasses to use with this add-on are called Pro Anna, Red and Cyan. They make plastic and paper versions and are very affordable. Villain is a 100 level tile based platformer about beating each level under a certain amount of time. Meyer, A Bird's Flight is an indie game about a flying bird. In Sadworm, overcome your sadness and depressing thoughts by climbing up to the top of the mountains. It's a physics-based game where you control a worm. Spiders Everywhere is the very first little adventure of little baby poop. Help him through his nightmare by avoiding or destroying all spiders. It's a cute, side-scrolling running gun action game in a vintage rubber hose cartoon style.
Pixel Gangsters is a mafia management game for mobile and PC inspired by classics such as Gangsters Organized Crime. Run your gang of mobsters and conquer the city in this mafia tycoon game. Dimension Deflation is a platformer where you switch between 2D and 3D perspective. Tile Map to Tile Set is a simple open source program that lets you split your tile maps or any other image into unique tiles. Striving for Light is a roguelite ARPG where you utilize a unique infinite expanding skill tree to fight your way through the darkness, striving for light. Mirama is a unique puzzle game with an interesting story. Witness the story of Josh Laddie while solving mind-buggling puzzles using mirrors and reflections. Mirama offers an exceptional experience for puzzle game lovers. In a real quest, the king of the Valley of Bits took a trip to the other side of the world and his brother, not so trustworthy, is doing an experiment a little bit wrong. Are all the people of the Valley of Bits being turned into zombies? In Santa's Village Builder, build your own cozy Christmas town. No limits, no haste, just you and your imagination. In World Rank Paper Toss, throw paper balls in a bin. Play by yourself in single player mode or play World Rank mode where your points are compared to everyone else's globally. Martial Law is a game about difficulties that came with communism in Poland. The story is shown from the perspective of a man who is abandoned because of his low social status. He tries his best to be there for his daughter despite the difficulties. In Box Day, put boxes on the right conveyor belt to get points by matching the label color to the conveyor color. Be careful, there are garbage boxes that you should throw out. In Rot Flash, rip out your organs and equip them in your own body. Fight biopunk monsters and drugged up space bandits. You are a Gajeshian cultist, a near mythological being built from the bodies of long dead saints. As usual, like the video and leave a comment for the algorithm. And as always, thanks for watching. By the way, have you watched this video yet? If you've watched this far, you'll probably like this one too. Check it out.